Thor, thanks for the update. How about this for an update on your sleep schedule? Daylight saving time this weekend. Dr. Yvette Liu back on the BT couch. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. I'm tired already just thinking about the change up, but we, we do have benefits uh, in terms of uh, the daylight that uh, happens in nighttime. But tell us about the common symptoms we're going to see this weekend with the change. So you can experience sleep disruption for as long as one week after the time change. Some people even experience sleep disruption for longer. And sleep disruption can include things like difficulty sleeping, difficulty waking up, poor sleep quality, poor sleep efficiency. People who are poor sleepers to begin with will be more affected as well as people who are short sleepers. If you have a chronic sleep debt, like if you're already sleep deprived, then you're going to be more affected by the time change. So sleep debt, you work on a, a night shift, a morning shift. Uh, how do we conquer get proactive beforehand to get ahead of this altogether? If you have a sleep debt, it's good to catch up on your sleep debt if you can. So to do this, you sleep in for a few days and you don't wake up until you feel alert and rested. So if you can catch up on your sleep, that, that will help you cope with, with the time change. Now, there are a lot of health effects that researchers have noticed with the time change. For example, there's on the Monday after the time change, they've noticed an increase in the number of pedestrian and car traffic accidents, as well as an increase in the number of heart attacks, an increase in the number of suicides, an increase in the number of workplace injuries. So you want to be particularly careful that morning. As well, there's a decrease in workplace productivity, an increase in cyber loafing, which is non-related internet surfing, which I'm sure many well, of that never happens right. Here yeah, in our exactly, room. Right. <laughs> it's all research. Right, yeah, exactly. And test scores. When they looked at people's test scores before and after the time change, they noticed test scores were lower uh, as long as a week after the time change. So obviously a significant impact. Um, subtly, we may not notice the changes, but especially if we're on the road, that's a big one. So what can we do come Sunday uh, to, to, to get ahead of things and start changing our habits? Well, what you can do before is get more rest the week before. And then you can actually gradually change the time you go to bed and wake up in the morning. So if you move your time, say, starting tonight by 15 minutes each night, and this is especially important for parents who have children who have difficulty adjusting to time change, you move the bedtime by 15 minutes each night, and this will help them be in a good spot on Monday morning when they have to wake up that, 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 at that earlier time. How important is something like exercise next week with the switch up? Exercise is really important all the time for a good, healthy sleep, and if you do regular exercise, you'll notice that you sleep better. As well, trying to stay away from lighted screens several hours before bed because the, the blue light from the screens can suppress melatonin, melatonin, which is a hormone in your brain that helps you fall asleep. And no caffeine after late afternoon, making sure you sleep and wake at regular times. And if you have a sleep problem that's not getting better, make sure to see your doctor because you might have an illness that can, cause, that, that can be fixed that can help you sleep better. And uh, if it comes to naps, and yes. we feel like we need a quick time out. Uh, what's Try your to keep your naps? naps to 20 to 30 minutes because if you sleep for too long, then you can reset your circadian rhythm. And as well, try to go outside and be exposed to some kind of daylight during the day and at night turn down the lights and that will help as well to regulate your circadian rhythm, which is the day-night rhythm that helps your body determine when is night and when is day. Good advice. To get ahead of this all together, oh, quickly, I, I want to point out the My Family Doctor Award. What's going on with this? Yes, so the BC College of Family Physicians has the My Family Doctor Award, which is an award that recognizes excellence in family medicine and celebrates the relationship between the family doctor and the patient. So if you have a doctor who's been exceptional, who's made a special effort to help you, I recommend you nominate them for this award. Nominations close March 31st, so you still have time. And just go online to myfamilydoctoraward.ca and you can fill out the form, the winners will get a chance to come, the, both the nominator and the physician will get a chance to come down to Vancouver in June to have the award presented. Oh, that's excellent. Now I just need to find a family doctor in Vancouver. It's a tough go in this city. Oh yeah, maybe we'll talk about that another time. Yes, most definitely. I know <laughs> I'm not alone on that one. Uh, Yvette, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Uh, the clock's changed.